All right, hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to share with you the Proverbs uh, 31 woman. So I have my computer here um, because I have all the notes here and all the text written out. Um, it is hot out here. It, I'm in Florida right now and I'm at the beach, so it's extra hot but I'm enjoying my time out here and just watching the beautiful water and hearing the beautiful sounds. But I just wanted to share with you Proverbs 31 woman. So Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10, um, it says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Who can find a virtuous woman? So we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about this today the virtuous woman and we know that um, a woman in the Bible represents a church and so this can be also applied to men who can find a virtuous woman and who can find a virtuous man for her price for his price is far above rubies but in particular this is talking about a woman and especially they have to be virtuous if you're going to marry them. So what does Webster's Dictionary say about virtuous? It says being in conformity to the moral or divine law as a virtuous action, a virtuous life. So all of this woman's actions, all of her life is encompassed around virtue. And then it says more in particular, being in conformity to the moral or divine law. So if you are seeking marriage, and if you are a woman seeking marriage, the man ought to have conformity to the moral and divine law. If you are a man seeking a woman, she ought to be in conformity to the moral or divine law as well, friends. Leviticus 23 and verse 22. Look what it says, and we're building on this of some characteristics of a virtuous woman. It says, Leviticus 23 and verse 22, And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning. Keep that word in your mind. Any gleaning of thy harvest, thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. So, here we have in Leviticus what the Jews had to do. If you had a field, you were set to set aside a portion of that field for the poor, for the stranger to be able to gather, be a part of the gathering of the harvest. Gathering of the harvest. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 19 to 21 states, restates this. It says, When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field and hast forgotten a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless and the widow. And the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy work of thy hands. So now it adds more elements to it not only the stranger, not only the poor, but it says the fatherless and the widow. Keep that in your mind. Then it continues to read, it says, when thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boffs again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow. Then it says in verse 21 of Deuteronomy 24, it says, when thou gatherest the grapes of the, thy vineyard, Thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow. Again, these things are repeating. So what, what does this have to do with 
the virtuousness of a woman, the virtuousness of a man. Um, Ruth now, very uh, wonderful book. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16 and verse 17. It says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. So Ruth is here telling uh, her, because we know the story of Ruth, that um, she, her husband had uh, passed away, and she was a widow. And she wanted to stay with Naomi and look what she says she says um wherever you go i want to go then it says and where thou lodgest i will lodge then it says thy people shall be my people thy god my god and if you know ruth she was a moabite she wasn't of the people of god but she sought to want to start a relationship with god she wanted to find the truth so a virtuous woman is one who seeks after the truth no matter what they want to follow the truth wherever uh, the truth goes and then it says where thou diest will i die and there will i be buried the lord do so to me and more also if aught but death part thee and me so ruth didn't want to leave naomi she didn't want to go um, with uh, her sister that went back she wanted to know the truth so ruth chapter 2 and verse 2 look what it says and ruth the moabitess said unto naomi let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn glean ears of corn after him in whose sight i found grace and she said unto her go my daughter so again like deuteronomy said leading a portion of the field so it can be gleaned by the widow Ruth said, I want to glean the ears of corn. I want to glean the harvest. So check this out. So Ruth is an example of, of those in these last days, the virtuous people seeking to be a part of the great harvest, the harvest of the gospel, friends. Check this out. You know, the message for these last days is to come out of her, my people, calling the people out of Babylon, calling the people out of confusion into the truth. So Ruth, she sought the truth and God uh, was able to work upon her heart and she uh, desired now, after she had obtained the truth, she wanted to glean the harvest. She wanted to go tell others about this truth. And then it says, after him in whose sight I shall find grace. That is God, friends. She found grace in God by actively working in ministry. This is what it means to glean the harvest. Christ says in Matthew uh, 13 and verse 36 through 39, he says, Then Jesus said, uh, sent the multitude away and went into the house and the disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the tares of the field and he answered and said unto them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world the good seed are the children of the kingdom but the tares are the children of the wicked the enemy that sowed that them is the devil the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. So friends, Ruth wanted to glean the field. She wanted to spread the truth to the world. This, this newfound truth that she was able to obtain because she was a Moabitess. She wasn't of the people of God. Look what it continues to say back in Ruth. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 7 and 17. And she said, I pray you, 
Let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. So not only was she involved in ministry, but from morning until evening, she was gleaning. She was working for the Lord. So this is what is a true virtuous woman. It says, verse 17, so she gleaned in the field until even and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an ephah of barley. So not only uh, was she working uh, from morning till evening, but it says that um, she would beat out that she had gleaned. She's a hard worker, able to work with her hands. This friends is a trait of virtuous woman then it says um, verse roof chapter 3 and verses 3 to 5 look what it says more characteristics of Ruth wash thyself therefore and anoint thee and put thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor but make not thyself known unto the man until he have done eating and drinking and it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down and he will tell thee what thou shalt do and she said unto her all that thou sayest unto me i will do this is naomi giving her instructions teaching her more in the truth and Ruth says all the truth that you have showed me I will do I will be active in helping others I will be have hospitality so it shows that um, she had hospitality so this is another trait look in Ruth chapter 3 verse 10 and 11 now and he said blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, in so much as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. So she was able to have more kindness in the latter than in the beginning. So she had a progression in her life. Each day she got more and more closer to God and she wanted to learn more and more this is a virtuous woman uh, verse verse 11 of Ruth chapter 3 says and now my daughter fear not I will do to thee all that thou requirest for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman a virtuous woman friends Ruth was a virtuous woman and the whole people of the city it says this is not where she's from but all of them knew that this lady was a virtuous woman by the way that she worked from sun up to sundown teaching people gleaning the harvest spreading the gospel message proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4 says a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband but she, she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Let's look a little bit about this crown to her husband. This is coming from uh, HP 267.3. It says, Christians are Christ's jewels. They are to shine brightly for him shedding forth the light of his loveliness their luster depends on the polishing they receive they may choose to be polished or to remain unpolished but everyone who is pronounced worthy of a place in the lord's temple must submit to the polishing process without the polishing that the lord gives they can reflect no more than light uh, they can reflect no more light than a common pebble. Christ says to man, you are mine. I have bought you. You are now only a rough stone, but if you will 
place yourself in my hands, I will polish you, and the luster which you shall shine will bring honor to my name. No man shall pluck you out of my hand. I will make you my peculiar treasure. Then it says, on my coronation day, you will be my jewel, my crown of rejoicing. Jesus will be proud of us as we take upon his gospel, as we uh, fully serve him and are committed to his will, we will be a jewel in his eyes, in his crown of rejoicing. And he's going to rejoice. All of heaven will rejoice when we take hold of the gospel. This is what it means to a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. So as um, the husband and the wife, the wife is a rejoicing matter to her husband. He's going to be proud of her in everything that she does, especially as she seeks to minister to others. So I hope that this was a blessing to you. I hope that um, you seek out more of these principles of the virtuous woman. This is just the beginning of the text. Who can find a virtuous woman? Have you found the virtuous woman? Have you found the virtuous man? May God help us. Blessings.